Why are you so mean to Hmm. Um, well, as you know, I'm quite jealous of her hosting skills, and right. uh, I mostly want to set her up to fail so that um, everyone will, in the end, choose me. Okay. Yeah, because, I mean, that was like three seconds you gave her to pivot from the from the main theme to the host theme. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I think the important part about being a... <laughs> Prodvisier is uh, staying on your toes. So, I guess point one for Nicole. That uh, is true. Uh, about like, like having what, never what produced. You? I want to dig into this a little bit. Hmm. What did she do to hurt you? I want to dig into this a little bit. I mean, it's not anything she's done specifically to me. It's just like her general. Um, or is it what she won't do to, to you? Just... <laughs> I told you that in confidence, Kelly. Well. Yeah, but this is the this is the show where we air all our dirt. That's how you introduce it, right? <laughs> I like so I'm reading the yellow comment first and it just said no. And I was like, oh, well that settles that. But then I saw comment after. So that's I mean that leaves that door open. That's yeah, hopefully. it's nuanced. Pages mm -hmm. of land of contrast. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Can can um, I ask you, like when you say bullshit talk show, do you mean that um, like by talk show standards, it's bullshit. Or do you mean that, like, it's a good talk show where the subjects that we get into are bullshit? I or mean, is it a third? definitely a mix of both. I wouldn't say it's a good talk show. I think it's a shit talk show where we talk about bullshit. How do you? Okay. What would be your? What would your? Is that how you would define our show? Is that? Do you think that's like tagline worthy? Uh we can throw it in the mix. It's nice. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like it's a bit, it's kind of redundant because it's a shit toe where we talk about bullshit. Like it's really leaning on one particular word a lot. Should we just call it a shit show? Is that like an uh, accurate description? Yeah, I mean, I feel like the, the reviews have already, so. It leaves room for interpretation, but it's like accurate on all counts. I, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I, I'm into it. Um... So, uh, but backstage, we were talking about um, dirty phrases that you know in other languages. And it occurred to me that you probably know some very dirty th phrases in Russian. And I was hoping you can share that with the class. Um, I mean, I might. So I was actually thinking about this when you guys were talking about it, which was that, you know, I went to a few places and um, like anyone can, you know, go online and play Counter-Strike and they'll learn Russian curse words. But I did want to... I don't know, get a little more boutique with them. Uh, and so I asked uh, a lady to teach me some swears while I was in Kyrgyzstan. And so she taught me some Kyrgyz swears, which I wrote down in my phone, mm -hmm. um, which is, it's so far away. It's like five feet away. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't know if you feel comfortable like covering for me while I'm going to get it. No, that's fine. I guess we'll never know. Um, so moving on, what is, do you have anything okay. you want to talk about today? Yeah, I wanted to talk about Kyrgyz swear words. Oh, perfect. Wow, well, do you happen to know any? Yeah. Um, yeah. In fact, let me tell you all about them. So, <laughs> I was uh, at a, a hostel, and I'm struggling to even remember how this came up in conversation. Um, maybe because I was just like about to leave the country, and I was like, "Man, I haven't learned a single curse word." Were you like, you know, you were lured to this place where you could sleep under false pretenses. You were like, it is not near hostile enough in here. And I need to learn some words that are going to make it more hostile. <laughs> yeah, it was like extremely pleasant and nice. And I was like, every hostel I've stayed at is pleasant and nice. It's just, I, I don't know who to complain to for advertising standards. <laughs> I mean, in, in some countries, they just kind of have this like laissez-faire attitude and you can't do anything about it. Like, mm -hmm. So let's let's see if we can find our way there. My my actually my most potent memory about this hostel was so I was there in uh February of 2020. So this is like February 12th kind of thing, right? Just to paint a picture of if you remember what early 2020 was like. I and do. um it's a simpler when time. I, what yeah, what I well when I crossed the border into Kyrgyzstan was the first time like 
any kind of government official had any kind of like coronavirus related questioning and this uh dude who spoke effectively zero english um sat me down and looked at my passport stamps and like saw that i had been in korea uh in south korea and was looking at it and he looks at me and he's like china and i was like well nope he's like no no china and i was like I mean, th there's no passport stamp for China. Like, I don't know what to tell you, man. But that was that was the uh, that was the containment protocol at the time was look at someone in the eyes and be like, China? <laughs> look into their soul and make sure that they're telling you the truth. China? Yeah, I, I, China. I figure they had the um, the like their most crack team of experts on this like remote border between Uzbekistan and Kyrgyzstan. And that's that's where they like that's the tip of the spear for. Is there like a big like glacier? With like along the thing there, the the I mean, I'm wondering the crack team are they like guarding some sort of crevice or? No, 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 no. They're the, they're the team that has all the free base cocaine. Mm. Perfect. I mean, we joke about it being sketchy, but I remember it was, I think it was that border crossing where like, you know, I mean, they have like soldiers there. It's no big deal, but they would like constantly like sweep you with the barrels of their rifles. It was very unnerving. Oh. That seems fine. Like not on purpose, just that kind of like extremely uh, lax. What is that called? What's <laughs> like you're walking. I'm not a gun guy. Like you walk, like you're walking onto the bus and you accidentally brush someone with your backpack, but it's like a fucking lo loaded rifle. Um. <laughs> yeah. Basically time. that. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I can't prove they were loaded. If we're being honest. Yeah. You didn't breathalyze them. No. Man, I, I swear to God, I have them in my phone. I'm not lying. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, I understand, you know, maybe uh, you're not one to stall. I get that. But you know who is one to stall? Stalin? A, somebody who can, like, it's almost their, their job, their niche to m make things up on the spot, if you will. Yeah, it'd be really nice if we knew someone like that, but... Mm -hmm. We can just sit here in awkward silence. That's fine. Yeah. Wow, that's such a jazzy intro. <laughs> I did forget to tell you, you are expected to dance to it. We can restart that oh, if you want. Oh my gosh. You know what? Table me for next time. I will prepare a dance. Well, what you can do is when we finish, just do, we'll play it again after the stream is over. You dance to it and I'll just kind of stitch that in in post. Great, great. Love post. Post always saves it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, I hear that a lot from people that are like into improv is that they love like post and like that's where the magic happens. The magic, yeah, yeah, and all the t in the after the show and you're like, oh man, I could have said that and I could have said that, but it mm -hmm. doesn't matter now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I yeah. do that with I do that with lots of arguments with my family. So, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually, it's really fitting that you're our guest this week because I totally prepared for next week's guest or was totally ready for next week's guest and... Um, Just ask the same questions. They're, they're probably good questions. Okay. Um, yeah, and that's, you're right. I guess it's like, it's but improvised. That's great. Perfect. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so I can just like improvise this. I, yeah, no, I do, I... I do like to stick to a script, though, so I, maybe I will just ask the same questions. Um, how did you get into motivational speaking? <laughs> well, if you, if by motivational speaking, I mean, I guess there's motivational speaking parts of improv if you choose to improvise those. Um, yeah, I, I got into improv like 10 years ago and I thought that I was going into a, like a music jam. And it turns out it was actually a musical improv jam, but my friend left out the word improv. So I, I was terrified. I was like, I didn't come here to do improv. I'm not interested in improv. Um, and then 10 years later, I'm still, I'm still involved in that same 
that's the same thing. So uh, I, I found it along the way, obviously. But yeah. What, so what instrument did you go in? Like, were you like planning to like go in and, or what, what instrument do you play, I guess, first of all? Yeah, so I mean, I, I went in thinking it was music. So I played the instrument of my voice, I guess. Oh, okay. um, yeah, and then um, like sort of like a singing, a singing jam, I guess. Um, Cause it was like musical based. Like, I guess I should clarify that like musical theater kind of based. So I knew it was theater, theatery, but um, yeah, the improv was like a secondary element to it. Mm -hmm. So you could, you're like, first improv gig was like extra improv because you didn't go in prepared at all. You didn't even know. Totally. Even and I improv, wasn't one of those. Meta improv. Yeah, and it wasn't one of those people that did improv in high school. You know, like people do improv in high school and stuff, but I was not that person. So I was like, oh my goodness, here we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right well, it yeah. seems to have worked out for you. I missed the part where that led to motivational speaking. Yeah, I know. Uh, well, you know, most motivational speaking is made up, right? Is that how that works? People just go I out think there. So. And... I don't think motivational speakers have ever used scripts. It's true. <laughs> They're just like, be yourself, do good things. Don't let people bring you down. So, so yeah. after your dreams, yeah. pay me money. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like incredibly jazzed already. Like I could take on the world as it is. Yeah. Right. Motivational peaking. I like that. More like motivational peaking. I'm peaking <laughs> in my motivational career as we speak. That was all I had. <laughs> It's it's probably best you don't acknowledge those jokes because it will only encourage her further. Oh, funny! I love them. I've been loving them. Okay, I'll keep them to myself. Paige's jokes well, are the best part of the show. Please, please acknowledge them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I do like I do I do want Paige to be happy, but also uh, Nicole is in charge of the show, and he she has decided we're being mean to Paige, so I just we have to follow along, right? I don't actually know where that came from, and I don't know if I'm on board. Why do you think I'm being mean to Paige? Oh, because oh, yes. you weren't giving her time to, to to get the cues ready. She's got to like, she's got to take those big data punch cards with the next theme song on them, and like load them up into the big reader, and like mm -hmm. turn the big crank to get them like locked into place and you know you have to make sure that like the machine is all lubed up it's very complicated mm -hmm. but you know this is the kind of audio video equipment you get on kijiji right it's it's what it is yeah it'd be really nice if like one day someone invented something where you could like just at the click of a button just have your whole show just like run itself but anyways <laughs> we can only dream mm -hmm. dare to dream dare to dream another motivational quote yeah, that's good that's good can we i don't have a notepad um can you just yeah can you give me that notepad that's very important to you and i'll just or are you gonna take notes for me no 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 okay well, i need it All right. <laughs> he's like don't take my notepad can uh, i mean the secretary there as well uh, yeah you can, you can have your own one. yeah okay uh <laughs> so I, let's get oh this one's full though I filled it with memories, Ian. Wow, that's an impressive. I think that's a really cool thing when you like fill a notebook up. Like, how satisfying is that? Like, mm, yeah, right? that was like the year of my life where I journaled, and then then I became cynical and awful again. Is that the notebook that I wrote porn in last time? Um, no, this is the notebook you wrote porn in. Uh, oh, that's what I was asking. I think I would, actually, I think that would be a great first exercise. So, um, because obviously the reason we brought you here, Katie, is to teach us improv. Because uh, as anyone who has watched us before knows, we need to learn. <laughs> and uh, I, I mean, if if you have some particular like exercises or kind of instructional stuff you want to run us through, like you know. I'm Mr. Hands Off the Wheel, but uh, I think that could be a good place to start. Is like, what, what if we kind of improvise some some fantasy ogre porn? Because that's kind of already our wheelhouse. O ogre porn? Yeah. Oh, okay, like O-G-R-E. <laughs> just clarifying. Yeah. Um, it's, it's just sort of, uh, it's one of those things that developed organically, um, but is basically, at this point, I would call it the main theme of the show. Amazing. 
Like, is that a good place to start or is that too advanced? You know, I feel like that's pretty advanced. I feel like, like improvised porn is its own advanced niche, no? Its own advanced level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, now I'm wondering, like, is like in the porn industry, like, do they have like people who stick to a script versus people that kind of like ad lib and riff? Like, is that like a kind of schism that exists or just different? different uh like approaches yeah actually that's like i am that's an interesting question yeah do they let people go off script or is it like i, I don't know a lot about it but i feel like i'd imagine there's some loose script <laughs> loose what <laughs> like script <laughs> oh yeah it's definitely that well like <laughs> Like, do they have, like, are there method porn actors who, like, insist on being a pool boy for the entire shoot? Oh, this is actually such an amazing premise for a sketch. Like, honestly, yeah. See, look at this. Yeah, it's like you're improvising with it. You're riffing on it. But what a fun, Wait, what a funny sketch if it was, like, yeah, the pool boy who was just, like, really, really method, really serious. Are you, are, you saying should, are you saying we should script it or we should just improvise it? You can improvise it. I'm just saying it. It would turn into a good sketch. A good premise. Mm -hmm. We call it a premise. It's a good it's a good comedy premise. Yeah. Yeah. Halfway halfway through, he just like starts breaking down into tears and talking about how he got this job to support his family because his father has cancer. Totally, yeah. <laughs> Wait, is that the pool boy saying that or the porn actor saying that? That's the porn actor as the pool boy. Okay. Yes. So the character took that job to support his uh, his father with cancer. Mm -hmm. Or an actor, I presume, took the job to like feed his coke habit or whatever. Like maybe he used to be like a Shakespearean actor, but there was like some sort of mix up, and he got like falsely accused and sent out of like Stratford. You know, like mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Has anyone made porn that's like? strictly limited to like iambic pentameter like Paige, can you look that up <laughs> this could be a good niche to get into mm -hmm. more like no. iambic porn tameter tameter nice thank you mm -hmm. more mm -hmm. like iambic pen tap it her good effort good effort <laughs> i liked nicole's better but that was good effort kelly that was a good effort right. <laughs> Or iambic mentameter, which is like five dudes at once. Oh my goodness. <laughs> but like in Shakespeare and text. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Neat. So can you can you kind of like guide us through like let let's let's work on a scene together. Um do we do we have enough performers? Do we need one more performer? Sure. I mean, we we can. You mean, are you two gonna do it or do it like us three, all three? Uh, I don't know. I'm just staring at our GM and seeing if he's gonna scribble notes or if he wants to do bits. Oh, I want to do bits. Okay. Oh, he wants to do bits. Well, then let's bring out Mr. Schlafenschwanz himself, Ian. Hey everybody! It's me, Ian, the GM. <laughs> What's going on? Holy moly! Holy okay. moly, indeed. Man, I was just chomping at the bit to be the pool boy, so mm -hmm. I hope that spot's still open. I don't think you're supposed to chomp. I think you should use like more of your tongue than your teeth. But oh, I... uh, <laughs> sorry I mean for cleaning the pool. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh. oh, no, I'm a filter feeder. I just... Oh, swim. Ian, he's not there to clean the pool. No. <laughs> Dirty <laughs> pond scum out of the pool. Nicole, have I told pond you about the teeth lady? Um, have, we, have we gone over that story? The what lady? The teeth lady? Nope. Um, you know, the you lady should with meet the her. You should give her that advice. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to get I don't want to get off on a tangent. Um. Suffice to say, she insisted that teeth was actually hot. But let's move on. Isn't that isn't that a bit? There's a comedy bit about that about how that's clearly not what. Anyways, whatever, doesn't matter. That's 
Unfortunate. Sorry about your luck. <laughs> How dry do you want it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's, right. That's the one. Well, and speaking yeah. of wetness, this is an, this is another thing we have in our, our sort of toolbox, Katie, is that uh, Ian's very good at like ASMR and sound effects. I don't know if oh, you wanted well. to do that. Yeah, you I were can. doing so good at it earlier. I really felt like I was just like inside of like a mouth. <laughs> I mean, I don't have my gum, so it's not as powerful, but do I mean, you need some gum? Yeah, if you give me some gum, that'd be great. All right, exciting. cover for me. Special skill. No, thank you. Okay, no, and now I'm doing it yeah. right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's really not the same without the gum. I know, because I can do like mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I hope everyone hated that. <laughs> yeah. I didn't. I didn't like it, but I appreciate that you can do it. That's yeah. good. No, thank you. Because you have a talent. Yeah. 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 It's a everyone's good isolated got a part that I can like clip it. And maybe just loop it. Yeah. And maybe I'll put that under the audio of Nicole reading her ogre porn. And <laughs> the <sounds> of... <laughs> How's mine? I mean, mine's do, better, we, right? we, do we have to compare the two? Is that like the. Yeah. Like, it's hard, it's hard I, I feel like that was a missed opportunity during our sound check. Like, we should have all just done the mouth sounds and seen kind of whose was best. <laughs> but what better time than right now? Yeah, fair. Do we should we go one at a time or all at once? Why not both? <laughs> <laughs> all right, Paige, I'm you're ready. First. I'm ready. Are we going for it? Are we doing this? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've already done mine, so I want to. Yeah, just I've done mine too. So Nicole, why don't you just do yours, and we'll layer them all together in post. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, that's really good. That's really good. Well, she's got Practice a that one. Mic. She fancies herself some kind of podcaster, so it's picking up everything. Damn, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. I also have this specialty sound. I learned this in junior high. Oh, yeah. I like that one, too. That's a bonus one for you guys. That's a great sound effect. Yeah. I used to be able to do it, but I'm smiling too much. It's really hard. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. So yeah, can we work some sound effects into the pool boy scene? I don't know. Are, are we adding too much here, Katie? <laughs> well, I mean, I feel like uh, you you should you like be inspired by the the ability to have sound effects. There's actually a whole yeah. improv game called Sound Effects, where mm -hmm. um, you see the action, right, and somebody on the side does all of the the sound effects for what they're what they're doing. So that could also be a spin off. Yeah. Yeah. So here's I... the here's the thing about um this this course you're teaching right now, uh, Katie, is you need like a very heavy hand when dealing with us, because we we tend to run roughshod over each other and our guests. So if you have an idea, you need to like emphatically tell us we're doing it, and like maybe just like wag your finger. <laughs> you do you, you want to do an improv scene? Is that what you want? I th I think that I think that's going to be a good way for us to learn. Okay, so how would I how would I start you off with something helpful at, to set up the scene helpful, and then see we could see where it goes. You hands off the wheel. Okay, so the boss. so in improv, we want to set up some of the basic like who, what, where, if we can from the top. So, for example, like walking on stage, being like. I have a thing for you. And the other character being like, cool, that's awesome. Um, is kind of a and waste this is of two porn lines. Specific improv. Yeah, yeah. But even okay. that, right? It, it'd be like a bit of a waste, right? Because it's like, we don't know who the characters are, or what the gift is, or where they are, anything like that. So um, in improv, we have an exercise where we do try to do the three W's. So who we are, where we are, and what we're doing in the first few lines of the scene. So we can really set up the premise and then we're all on the same page. So I think that's a great place to start. Um, if we all try to build that and then, yeah, yeah. See what happens. I'm into it. Do you want me to, uh, to coach from the side? Like, are you three gonna, gonna roll with this scene? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Okay. So it's just Kay. like literally anything. I'm just going to come in with, 
one of us yeah. will come in with, with who, either who you are, what you're doing, where you are. So an example might be like, uh, hey, Steve, uh, it's been a while since you've been to the dentist. And you're like, oh, yeah, hey, doctor, you know, so-and-so, right? So then immediately we know, like, you're at the dentist. You have your dentist. You have Steve. You know what I mean? Just, like, detail, I guess. Right. Yeah. Well, I think Nicole sounds ready to start. Totally. Um... We're doing, can, can, can you like, I need a little coaching for this. What do, what am I, ah. how do I start? Like I just. So usually we start with a suggestion. So, I mean, we've kind of, it's kind of like, we've maybe pre, do we want to do something fresh? Like we predetermined the pool boy thing. Mm -hmm. Do you want a fresh suggestion or, or we can take that as our suggestion? What do you think? I think we should take suggestions from the audience. Uh, which is currently largely Paige. Great. So maybe she can, she can type out her suggestion for, uh, she wants the scene to be less than three minutes. That That's reasonable. <laughs> yeah, and like, let's ask her for something specific so she's not lost. Like, right. do we want to ask her for like, an, we, you can ask anything, but it just has to be specific, like for an object or a location or something like that she can kind of latch onto. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, it, Paige, if you just want to give us, like, any uh, swear word in the Kyrgyz language, that would be good. Poor Paige. Now your audience is like, no, we're not playing. <laughs> All right. Paige, Paige, why don't you give uh, why don't you give a location? A location's helpful. That's already one of our three Ws. If you, if you can think of one. Google headquarters, amazing. Okay, yeah. So there, that's that's great. So, and all right, let's let's not feel lots of pressure, Nicole. Don't feel pressure to like get everything out on this perfect first line. But now we know where we are, so you can, yeah, resp just resp say yes to that. Okay. Um, do I so like do I should I like set the scene? Should I, or do I just like talk to someone and like hope they respond? Like yes. Like yeah, yeah. So you can um, you can start by addressing another character in the in the scene if you want. Um, yep. And sometimes it helps too, Nicole, if you go on with a, a thought of like maybe who you are in Google Headquarters. So what's a character you might find in Google Headquarters? Just loosely. Okay. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Randy. How's your day so far? Yep, doing doing pretty good. Just mopping up the floors here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. They're looking pretty, you, looking pretty uh, shiny. Oh, so, sorry, I totally interrupted you. <laughs> it's okay, rude, Randy. That's what they call me. Sorry about that. <laughs> go on, go on ahead and speak your mind. Oh no, I was just saying, floors look really shiny. Um, you're doing you're doing a great job. It seems seems like you're having a good day. Oh well, thank you kindly. That's very nice of you. But it almost seemed like you wanted to say more. You know, me just being the lonely, lowly janitor that I am, I keep secrets good, you know? I just, uh, to be honest, I'm having a real rough day. I, uh, as you know, it's my job to review, you know, the what comes up on Google search. And nice, yay. Someone, uh, I found a lot of people have been searching sonic lately and it's my job to figure out what happens when how to turn what at what level you turn on safe search and uh seen some really problematic things and it's kind of ruined my day i just never thought i would see knuckles like that and uh <laughs> being a big yeah. sega fan it's really how deep he was i bet <laughs> it's hasn't hasn't been a good time um, well that's a lot of weight to have on your shoulders and uh, Randy. Oh, one second. Um, Randy. Yeah. What, what is it, Marjorie? Randy, <laughs> are you in the same place you were mopping when I came in here an hour ago? Oh, I got to go. <laughs> Seems I've overstayed my welcome. Randy, are you trying to get the staff to divulge secrets again? 
No, no, of course not. I'm just here to clean. Look how clean this patch of floor is. I know I take my time, but I do good work. I hope we don't need to have another sit down in the Lego room. No, Marjorie, that won't be necessary. <laughs> you know, we, I we, don't like to use the Lego room. Uh, okay. Look, we cut to a scene uh, where Randy is uh, by himself in like the custodian's basement and he confesses his plot where he is spying and and getting secrets and why he's doing that. Well, scribbling furiously in a journal, like turning on cameras and stuff like that. Things things have been pretty good here. The infiltration has been <laughs> exceptionally good. No one suspects anything except for Marjorie. Marjorie, <laughs> the other janitor <laughs> who cleans the second floor. I, I don't know what it is about this, this Marjorie, but she just seems to know that I'm not a real janitor. Maybe it's the way I wax or the way I uh, <laughs> dump out the trash bins. It doesn't have that artisanal flair that janitors are so famous. Oh, I, uh, sorry, I gotta go. <laughs> I'm talking to myself. Randy! Ah, uh, yes, Marjorie. Randy, <laughs> Yes, Marjorie. Okay. Why is the door locked? Be because it's... I'm on my break, Marjorie. God. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Some uh, uh, generic cleaning product. Let me just let me just uh, open the. Okay. I can't get the door open. Again. <laughs> and, uh, I shut. I like shut down my web camera, and we go back to the original scene from upstairs. And I like squinted her really hard. Now, Randy, yeah. do you mean to tell me that you're not just here? You're not just a friendly janitor with an open ear here to help me bear my soul? No, no, that's exactly what I'm saying I am. I'm just a humble janitor, a real authentic janitor, doing all sort of janitorial processes here at Google HQ. You know, uh, the more the more I listen, the more this just doesn't end up. Like, why do oh. you and Marjorie have the exact same accent? For <laughs> like no reason. Because we grew well, up on the same block. <laughs> I, I must I must ask you, what was your name again, Miss? Oh yeah. I'm I, sorry. I, mean, I know many people here. Google is a very large company. What is your name? Uh my name is actually Marie Google. I'm the daughter <laughs> of the Googles, and uh I'm actually doing an undercover boss episode, so I'm a little curious to know what's going on between you two here. You seem to have some beef. Well, the, the, the undercover boss thing explains a lot, Marini, as I was wondering why you do not have an accent. As, as we all know, which city and which state in the southern United States we are in. And you, you, you have a rather Canadian affect to you, and I was very curious about this. Yeah. Well, first of all, I must say that I am... I am just shocked that you would deceive us in such a way. Pretending to be <laughs> someone that you are not, shame on you. Yes, I agree, Randy. You know, you may not be so bad after all. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we can get along, Mar Marjorie. Sorry, I almost called you. Marjorie. Maybe, maybe we can uh, work, work something out between us. The first floor and the second floor don't help have to be a war. You called me by her name. Mar Sorry, what? <laughs> you called me Marine. You've been spending a lot of time talking to Marine, haven't you? Look, Marine's on the third floor. And what I'm happened on the first. to us, what? Randy? I just, <laughs> look, I know we were we used to be passionate lovers. What? what? I just meant we used to clean very effectively. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right, sorry, that's me and Marine. I'm so confused. No, oh, no, Marie say yes to and him. And with that in your own time, but say yes you're... to him, Kelly. That was a great offer. Say yes, say what? yes. Passionate lovers. Oh You're my dear lovers. heavens! In such a humid day, I forgot that we were lovers. <laughs> oh, Randy, I must apologize. Of course, how could I forget those long nights, those even longer mornings, and the endless sounds of this. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> oh. but, I, I feel so so ashamed, Randy. Why why did you feel the need to to lie when I did not believe you? Why did you say we were not lovers when you knew we were? 
What? Please don't feel like you need to hide your love from me just because I'm the boss. Hey, I don't mean, just turn, turn it a thing against old Randy. I, I'm I'm <laughs> proud to be a lover of of janitors of the first floor, second floor, and third floor. <laughs> Oops, oh no! Did oh, I no. say that out loud? <laughs> oh shit! But <laughs> it doesn't matter anyways because our time is over, Marjorie. That was many many moons ago in the in the hot hot. I'm not going to say exactly which state, but we all know which one it is. Absolutely. We're very <laughs> proud of our state. That's right. And don't and... just behind us, Marjorie. You, you need to move on. You, stop, you gotta stop harassing me here at work. Has it really been that many moons? It's been 42 years. <laughs> How many moons is that? I don't understand the metric system. Uh, it's a... Uh, I'm just a janitor. And <laughs> scene! I feel like we're over a three minute tape okay. page. Right. Did we <laughs> did we go over? Yeah, I wasn't watching the timer. Hmm. Oh, there was a timer? Well, I mean I know, we, we could have checked the, I just the got overall so, time. Oh, so in, and seen what I got so at. enthralled by our multiple plot line plot lines. But good work. I feel like we uh like Nicole just like and in, like giving giving backstory, like being like, this is who I am and this is what I'm doing. So good. Cause then we actually can play along. It's surprising mm -hmm. how many scenes go on and on without like someone's name or like what they're doing. Like, and we don't mm -hmm. care as an audience. We're like, whatever. We don't care that you're cutting a like dog's hair. We don't know who you are or what you're doing. So yeah, you did so good in that. <laughs> But also, I fucked up bad, as you pointed out. You didn't fuck up. What do you mean? Oh, I, I, I didn't yes answer him. I said no, and I, I, now I have to, now I have to suffer an improv punishment, don't I? Oh, I want to get I you mean, to the stick. Oh my goodness! Yeah, that's the old school improv. That's the, <laughs> the nineteen thirties improv punishment. Now you just, uh, you just say yes in the scene, and you're good. Mm. I'm just noticing for the first time that your um, bookshelf looks color coordinated. Is that a thing? Oh god, that's so satisfying. It is. Oh, it is color blocked. I yeah. I realize that is the most frustrating organizational system if you have like a ton of books, but I have like not that many on the shelf. So yeah, they're color blocked. That's um yeah, that's wonderful. I think libraries should do that more. Yeah. color coded books yeah well no instead of like by topic yeah by i know i just posted, want a real blue book yeah right i posted it once and there are just like some angry people had a lot of feelings about it because they're like i'd never be able to find my books and i'm like yeah it's definitely not something you do with like a ton of books because yeah then you're like was that book yellow like i hope i remember <laughs> yeah. i feel like if you've read the book you know what color the cover is True. So, That's true. You're I mean, right. Like, if they're your own. Your red your like red books bookshelf could be that. But true. Yeah, that's a good call. Hmm. Cool. Yeah, I library love that. very be satisfying fun. from my point of view. <laughs> Thank you. Three decimal. Was <laughs> it also good? Um since you said it was good, Katie, was it also good the way uh Ian and I completely cut Nicole out of the scene and then just stopped engaging with her. Mm -hmm. I felt that felt right. It felt natural. <laughs> I didn't feel like did that. That's funny. You, you, did you feel that in the scene where you like, Oh, uh Oh, I feel Me? like we, uh, we, yeah. Oh, I definitely like, to be honest, that was kind of my ploy going in <clears throat> as I was like, cause I'm totally afraid of improv. It's like my worst nightmare. Um, and so going in, I was like, maybe there's a way that I can get these two to like, just talk to each other. Um, but then I got real excited about my character and I was like, damn it. I have, there's so much I could do with this. Yeah. I, I feel like it's easy to like something we did, which everybody does. So this is not a, don't feel bad. It's like, I, it's like always the thing is like everyone kind of offers a new plot point and like, so then it kind of, you know what I mean? It's like we're, there's multiple things going on. And so it's hard, it's harder to loop those around. But I trust mm -hmm. that like, had we gone longer that like, we 
you know, Ian and Kelly, your characters could have looped back to Nicole or like Nicole, if it was long form, right? You could come back in. And so it'd be a good character setup that we would leave for a bit and then we could come back to. But of course, in short form, it's kind of like lots of moving parts are hard to hard to wrangle. But I didn't realize it was your worst fear. You did so awesome. I feel like mean now. I'm like, I was just like, okay, Nicole, we'll just think of something. You did so good. Thanks. Um, my trick for doing improv is to be at least one drink deep when it happens. So nice. Well, I, I just think personally that that's inappropriate. <laughs> <clears throat> Clearly. You should be at least three drinks deep, Nicole, before you start. <laughs> you never know when improv is going to happen. So I just stay. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> one drink deep all day. <laughs> oh my gosh. For that impromptu uh, improv circle that'll bust out yeah, exactly. in the park. You're like, I'm ready for it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, they just hide in bushes and yeah. stuff like that. Well, that's what I told the cops and they pulled me over. They're like, how many drinks have you had? I'm like, do you understand how improvised driving is? Like, there's some guidelines, but I don't know what anyone around me is going to do. You always have to be ready to react. Mm -hmm. And that's why I have all the empties. <laughs> and that's, oh my gosh. No. I've been only drinking one drink all day, officer. I can only do improv on one drink deep. So yeah. just make sure I re-up here and there and you know yeah one drink it's the 40 taped to my hand yeah that's right <laughs> only one because i'm driving and i do need to steer you just have a breathalyzer to like keep yourself it's like you know how diabetics like check their blood sugar like yes. regularly throughout yeah. the day you just have a breathalyzer to make sure that you're like the perfect amount of drunk all day so it's like it's still legal to drive but and like you could do improv but like yeah that's what yeah. car breathalyzers are for isn't it so you can always kind of maintain <laughs> your minimum like sober enough to drive, but drunk enough to take on an improv troupe. That's, that's right. That's the ideal. <laughs> zone. That's a good yeah. bracket. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm learning I'm... so much about improv already. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I need to drink more, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> I, Wait, I, I, I didn't. I, I didn't offer that tip for the record. Let it be known. Yeah, <laughs> that was not my know. advice. <laughs> Yeah. Improv coach Katie, um, <laughs> recommend <Just> noted. Recommend <laughs> <laughs> the sentiments uh, yeah. are entirely false. Well, that's a fair point. I mean, you are the teacher here, so maybe you could work us through your um, your general regimen of like alcohol, pharmaceuticals, uh, uh, like other illicit substances. Like, what what do you you use to get in that sweet spot? Oh, hey, you know what? the only illicit substance you need is your own adrenaline and an open heart and an open mind kelly all pure natural stuff <laughs> cool where do we buy that <laughs> yeah like do i kind of have to like sweat out my own adrenaline and then kind of like do like a weird like reduction on it and then like snort it or like how do i how do i it how do always, i get jacked up in my own adrenaline it always flows within you flows within you. This is my motivational speaking coming background. Recall. Right, right. I, no, I understand. <laughs> well, that's a good, that's, that's a good line. Of... Oh, that's such a good sound. All right. Oh. Um, let's briefly mute ourselves. And uh, okay. let's well, go uh, time for intermission anyways. So, oh, there's not really a fire, right? <laughs> Um, probably not. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> just Kelly gets a shrug. Hmm. Huh. Well. The bodies have been muted. All right. Okay. So, Katie, I do have a question for you that I've been meaning to ask. Yeah. Have you, have you seen this like meme coming up in like? I've seen it a couple times now, where it's been like this like joke about how. It, improv groups are like kind of culty or like there's like comparison between like improv and cults have you seen i this? haven't seen it but that's hilarious i'll have to look it up is it like general meme meme that's going around is it like a specific uh, one or just like no, it's not like a it's not like a like a meme like an internet meme but it's like it's just been like a joke that's come up a few times um there's been like um so do, do you watch have you watched any bojack horseman I have, yes. I'm not, like, super versed, but I know what it is. Yeah, yeah. Okay. There's an episode where one of the characters gets into an improv group, but they're, like, very clearly... Very clearly the improv group is, like, a metaphor for Scientology. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and so it's, like, it's very funny. It's really well done. Um, but there's, like... 
a uh, yeah, there's a whole episode about it, and it's like very good. And then there's like I've just heard like various things about like specifically improv groups, like like big improv groups. There's so I, we listen to I listen to this podcast called Behind the Bastards, and he's like talking about um, he, they talk about cults quite a bit. And the one car- the uh, comedian he had on to interview while he was like talking about these cults was like basically comparing it to her improv group and being like these are some similarities that i see between the two and like <laughs> is there like that's funny i love yeah. that i need to like look that up that's so good i can send you yeah i'll send you all the episodes and stuff but yeah it's do you have any like is there like anything that like would stand out to you as like are there any like weird rituals or like <laughs> i mean i think like definitely you could make like if an outside eye came in and like saw it going down that it might look actually pretty funny because like if you didn't know anything about it because like there's lots of games that I guess would kind of be from the outside I would be like ritual like could look ritualistic right or could look really weird um and then just obviously like a bunch of theater or like artists in a room like that's already like a whole thing right mm-hmm. like all that energy so yeah like we play lots of games like whoosh where we pass the energy and stuff so, you could totally, you could totally like, um, yeah, that'd be such a funny joke. Like there'd be so much to support it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. All the like warm up games. I also just, I found one that was like, future, do you watch Futurama? I, have again, I've seen if or like sit kind of like you, I've seen a few, but. It just says, not sure if improv <laughs> is a cult or a pyramid scheme. <laughs> I like that one too. Interesting. Nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I just thought it was kind of funny. And it's, uh, they were saying, yeah. specifically, like he says, he's like, you know, just because things have things in common with cults doesn't mean that they're like a cult or that they're bad. It's just like, because there's like, there's lots of things that people get involved with that are, yeah. like, have all these things where it's like, people are really bonding. Like, there's like one person totally. that like, they're following. There's like all these things. Yeah. It's like, doesn't mean that it's like a cult or dangerous. It's only like a cult if it's like exploiting people or like. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah no I feel like um I feel like too it's like yeah definitely improv gets like inside jokey which is like kind of culty I guess or whatever you know like people start getting like their inside jokes and then yeah yeah that's funny okay what's your favorite game my favorite game improv game yeah oh um oh my goodness like a short or, form, short form game? Or one, ones that you just enjoy in general. Ooh, you're kind of echoey, Ian. Am, am I now? Yes. It sounds like Is maybe it? you're coming through on two different mics or. Am, am I echoing? echoing? Yes. Okay, okay we're, we're going to go back to silence minds. <laughs> no, you know what? No, that's it. Oh, that's better. Yeah. I, I muted the oh, wrong yeah. person. Yeah, you, look, you sound great. Um. Good yeah, I unmuted oh, okay. the Ian person, so we were getting the audio. It doesn't matter. Oh, gotcha. uh, now that we've completely killed the flow of the great conversation you were having, um, I guess we could give a fire alarm update, which is... Please do. <laughs> Are you okay? Well, is the house very, on fire? Well, I have this very yes. aggressive fire alarm, as you know. Um, and it goes up through the whole house. And so my landlords live upstairs. And this has happened before where sometimes like they'll be like oh yeah sorry we'd like you know didn't turn the range fan on cooking kind of thing uh and you know so my alarm goes off if they you know burn something uh, but during that commotion i feel like you heard this as well yeah the the carbon li- so, monoxide yeah so on. this this the smoke detector in general will say like fire well it says in two languages it goes fire foo, but it like the robot voice doesn't know how to pronounce foo, so it goes like fire foo and that's very confusing and that's normally what the robot voice says but today it seemed to be saying carbon monoxide which made me concerned that it was something else but then having texted my landlords they said oh we just you know burned something forgot to turn the the range hood on so it's probably that but it could be that and carbon monoxide. So I if, I feel worried about this. Well, I feel good because we're on camera. 
Yeah, so if you guys if pass, out, pass out, I have your address. You we'll call the police. Like it's, yeah. it's a foolproof situation, I think. Like there's, there's no, it's basically no risk. I know it's cold too, but you could also crack a window. But it, well, it's not smoky down here. Because what I'm thinking, like is, for the carbon monoxide, though, right? Like if you have a window well, open. When I'm, here's my thought process: is if we're not passed out yet, maybe it's just enough carbon monoxide to make us loopy, which could be good for improv because we'll get kind of like loose and comfortable, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's like adding three more beers like that. We no. I don't I, condone the, the carbon monoxide as a tool for improv. Hmm. I work with scientists and I'm like dating a scientist and I like that sounds like sound science to me and I totally approve of this plan. Thank you, Nicole. I appreciate your positivity. You should be a motivational speaker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't don't let Katie and Paige stop you from achieving your dreams. Like you just yeah. you inhale all of the carbon carbon monoxide that you want. Yeah. And I feel like I've inhaled just enough to do another scene. <laughs> Want right. to know what Katie's favorite game is? First? Sorry, no, yeah, finish what you were saying. Like, I, I'm just going to mute myself again. No, no, it's okay. I can't mute myself without muting you. I'm just going to stand over here and open the window. Because that's yes. actually a good idea. Yes, thank you. It makes me feel better. I'm like, yes. Um... Yeah, I my favorite game is um, I like sounds like a song. So at any time in the scene, someone can be like, sounds like a song and you have to break out into song. I literally like that one. And I also like a good actor's nightmare if it goes well. Sometimes it, it doesn't. But when it does, it's so satisfying. So um, you basically get somebody's phone um, and you um, can text or like read their text chain. And what happens is the person in the scene. So if I'm the improviser in the scene, um, my other improviser has the phone and that's the next line they have to say, like this text thread, basically. So it kind of goes, it, it gets kind of pigeonholed into that, but it's always really, really great because it involves the audience. Um, and it's really fun to play within that and stuff. And like, if you get someone's like juicy text thread or like, or just like ridiculous text thread, yeah. um, it, it's, it's great. So actually maybe that one's like one of my favorites. I think for short form when you can like, fully involve the audience in like more than just a suggestion. I really love that because it's like total connection with them. And then um, we get to like play with them kind of and they're part of the scene. I love that. So yeah. that's yeah. so great. Giving an improviser your phone to read. I, ag next. I agree. I agree. When people do it, I'm like, I'm such a hypocrite. I'm like, I would never, I would never do this. But thank you for giving us your phone. I guess yeah. you have to pick a safe, a safe uh, text thread, or you just have to be one of those people that's like, Whatever you don't know these details, you can do it. Okay. Have I have one it. more additional question about that. Um, what is like one of the, the spiciest prompts you've taken from like that game? Like have Spice, you ever yes. have you gotten like oh. from like you're like someone's <gasps> breakup text and you're like, oh god, mm -hmm. oh shit. Yeah, I think the best one there has been one where someone's been like conspiring to break up. We haven't gotten like uh it'd be so crazy if they gave us like, their breakup friend. but we've definitely had one where it's like maybe uh somebody was talking to their friend about their partner or whatever someone they were dating and it got kind of like yeah got kind of juicy and like it's fun because it's like you're still trying to justify the scene in another way too because you're like improvising with someone who doesn't have the phone so yeah. um it gets pretty silly but yeah i think we have gotten that for sure but that nothing like, like that. scandalous That'd be super awkward if your partner was in the audience. And you like hand over your phone and you look like. Oh so, anyway, this fucking bitch. That's the yeah. first time you read. Or if you're someone who texts a lot of detail, like if you're like Marissa Jones from my science class, and you know, but mm -hmm. usually texts are vague enough that that's also fun because you know, like it's assumed context, so that's always funny too. So mm -hmm. uh, you can kind of fill in the blanks and make it more scandalous, but. Yeah. But well, I'm in a long distance relationship, so like 98% of my texts are just sex. So that would be. So your phone would be in like such a wild ride. That'd be. Yeah, I definitely feel like we should play this game with Nicole's phone. Yep. <laughs> that's a hard pass. <laughs> yeah, that's. Oh, that's so fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I. Yeah, if someone gave us that thread, I'd be like, again, Ooh. I'd be like, wow. I would, I would not, but you, you do. That's cool. 
Mm-hmm. Well, well, we can put that open anyway. Does anyone have any sex in their phone that they'd like to use as the basis for? If I can scream them, maybe. If you can screen, scream them? <laughs> no, that is not what I said, but yes. Yeah, would uh, that be a fun wrinkle is that we have to like scream the contents of these texts? Um, yeah, I'm into it. I uh, just scrolling up here, one of my texts says, suck my white ass, Schultz. So <laughs> that counts as a sex, right? Absolutely. Yeah. That's the sexiest thing I've heard all day. <laughs> and what's awesome too is like you're like the scene not being about sex is like even better because then yeah, you're trying to justify yeah, those kinds of texts or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um yeah. I feel like we have time to do a quick game before we pivot to our extremely long game. So, uh, w- once again, I'm imploring you, Katie, to just put your, like, boot on our neck and just, like, s- scream at us, really, what activity we're going to do before we put you through the meat grinder. Mm. Okay, so you want to play a short form game? Like, just a little something like that? Yeah, yeah okay. let's try to keep it less than less than three minutes. Okay, cool. Let's play Should Have Said. So this one is just where we do a scene. It's more about the short form game than the, you know, we, last time we kind of got into some some characters and things like that, but we'll still try to establish who we are, what we're doing, where we are. Um, but yeah, it'll be a, it can be a three person scene and I'm gonna uh, say your name and then I'll say should have said and what you do with that. So if I'm say a line and I'm like, let's go to the store. And I'm like, Katie should have said, then I have to try to find a totally different line to say. Um, and it's way more fun if you find like a, a very different line. So instead of being like, let's go to the store, should have said, let's go to the park, should have said, you could be like, let's go to the store, should have said, and then finding something totally different, like, um, let's make out, you know what I mean? Like something that's going to change the change the course of it. So it's definitely uh, to be on your toes too. So um. Yeah, if you three... This is, yeah, that's like Switch, right? Sort of, yeah. So Switch um, is maybe... that might Maybe that's the same game called Switch. There's another game called Switch where you switch characters. But I feel yeah. like this is the game that we have played before where we just yell Switch and you have to change what you say. I feel like this has oh. happened. Oh, oh uh, yeah. I think we played I think it we're as, on the same as a like, drinking game or something like that, though. Possibly. Yeah. Well, I mean... No, not okay, us. Cool. No, no. I think it was like uh, it's we. It was like almost a sociables rule or something like that. And well, like, let's do what Katie's saying. I just I feel I, yeah, I feel like sociables. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. It's just switch switching the line. Yeah, should have said switch the line. Totally. Cool. Awesome. Right, can, you, so, can you two start? Because I'm not sure I entirely grasp it. So. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. Cool. Yeah. You two, and then let's get Paige to give you. Uh, and I'll watch the clock this time, Paige. I'm sorry. We will be. We will be tight. Um, uh, if Paige can give us an object to start the scene off, any object, but like a good one, can it be a schlafenschwanz? A wedding what cake. Is- that's amazing. Yeah, let's have. Let's let's go for it. Cool. Uh, uh, hey, I'd like to return this wedding cake. What? What's wrong with it? I I I make great cakes. I mean. I, I, your reputation does precede you. You do make great cakes. This one in particular, I, I was just kind of wondering if maybe you were having an off day. What should have said. Oh, what talk- oh, sorry. Kelly yeah, should have said. Thrown- um, it's it's just that, honestly, the cake is great. I just realized I don't want to get married. Oh shit. Ding. <laughs> Damn. Damn. Dude, so, that's that's heavy. I, I know. Your wedding's today. Well, I mean, you're right. And that's why you're such a good baker, is you know the date of the wedding. It's on the cake. <laughs> that's that's right. Ian um, should have said. Uh yes, I know many things. 
Should have said. Things that may surprise you. Well, and that's also why you're a <laughs> great uh, stockbroker too. And this is why I come to you for everything, including my emotions. Uh, I just I I don't have anyone to talk to ever since the janitor mysteriously got fired at work, and so I just I. <sighs> The cake is a metaphor. Do you understand? You don't need to say a single thing more. Okay. I know everything that you're Should've saying. Should have said. Yep. <laughs> Should have said. Uh, is that your wife behind you? <laughs> Ding. Oh, well, <laughs> not yet. Honey, what are you doing here with our wedding cake? You said that you were going to get the decorations changed, and it it kind of sounds like you're trying to return it. Is it our wedding cake, Susan? I mean, it was supposed to be. You were supposed to be at the church an hour and a half ago. Nicole should have said. I mean, not anymore. I'm marrying your brother, Hans. Ding. I'm sorry, brother. <laughs> <laughs> your brother slash stockbroker friend slash wedding cake maker, Hans. Yay. It's things like this. Oh. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that was great. Nice. Brought it all back. That was awesome, you three. It's great. Mm. Yeah, nicely done, Ian. That way to introduce me into that scene. Yeah. Yeah. You'd, you'd be a good wife to <laughs> cheat on with your husband. <laughs> I get that right. a lot. I think this game is really cool too, because like without fail, when someone calls should have said, the like second or third thing you say is always like way juicier and way more interesting to the scene. Like um it kind of just shows you you can totally go there with the scene and it's like awesome right like you can totally mm. be like i'm getting like no actually I'm marrying your you know like we're not getting married it's like to kind of get yourself into trouble it's yeah it, it's i like that i like that one you, you did great thanks you're an excellent coach oh thank you i just said <laughs> i <laughs> do you want to get married to hans and i <laughs> Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> Off yeah, try it. <laughs> Is that like somebody should have said to you, but like should have had an accent? Switch your character's like, accent. Okay, well, ding, now Hans. you're good. <laughs> I didn't have one before that. Anyone can be named on. <laughs> the game that gets racist real quick. Mm. Yeah, the game that's like, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I guess it's about time for our mid-show intermission, where it's definitely for technical reasons and not because I have to pee or anything. Are we doing um, the interpission? Yeah, yeah, it's time for the interpission. Everyone, let's take five. Oh, perfect timing. Did you see that? See, and this is why this is why you're a natural for theater. <laughs> yeah. This is I why like... Nicole has such a fear because she knows she's gonna miss her returning from a piss cue. Like she <laughs> no, no I heard no cues. It's so funny. I like heard the music and I was like, that feels like the end. <laughs> so funny. Yeah. It's a good it's a good tune. It really you, you know what part oh, of it you're in. Shit. <laughs> awesome. Okay, well while we're yeah, no, okay, no, we're all here. Um, so let's quickly kind of do the character. Well, no, you created your character. Okay, why don't we all introduce so. our characters, and when we get to Katie's, we'll do her stats as well. Nice. Did you take my pile? Like, no, I put them down here. Hoisted by my own petard. Do you want any of these? Um, am I going to eat them? Oh, I don't know if you, wanted, if you wanted them for note taking. No, I don't want to look. Yeah. Who's mm. first? Or do you want to set up the, the story first? Uh, let's do characters first. Okay. We'll do characters first. Oh, yeah, yeah. Holding the mic is good. <laughs> okay, who's first? So, sorry, one second. It's boss, right? Sure. I just want to write it down so I know which ones are. We don't use the S. Pups. Er, oh, that's funny. Oh, we, we don't use the S? Well, the S is special, which it, it's already <laughs> it's already enough going on. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, that's fine. Unless you want us to have special. No, we can no, wing no. it. We no, can call an audible. Nope, nope. nope. 
we can okay. have 10 stats if you want. Uh, yeah, I guess let's just start by introducing our characters and uh, then I'll kind of jump into the, the story afterwards. But do, do you want to explain, does Katie, uh, do you know the rules for the how the game works and stuff? Because this is the first uh, time I've played this game as a GM, so. Amazing. I, 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 I don't know if I do. I'm sorry. That's such a weird answer. I, I think like I have been through one of these shows before, like a back a little while ago. Um, but I can't quite remember. Yeah. Do you want to explain, Kelly? Uh, yeah. Kelly well, I mean, I'll defer to Nicole. It's her show. Um. Sorry. We're. You want us to explain the game or how it goes? Sorry, I was writing notes. Yeah, basically, so this guy over here is sort of our... He's he's now the improv teacher. Um, he snatched the pebble from your hand uh, and, uh, you know, wearing the fancy robes. And he's basically going to walk us through this story in which he is going to tell us what's happening in the world around us, what characters not played by us do and say to us. And what we do is we can just say, well, okay... Uh, I walk up and say this, or I, I, I go up and do this. And um, when, when there becomes an element of uncertainty, like we, we want to try to do something like, oh, I, I want to, you know, I want to jump over this gap between the buildings. Then at that point, um, he'll ask us to roll dice um, to see if it happens or not. And that kind of dictates what kind of turn the story takes. Awesome. Okay. So That's it's great. really just an extended improv scene with uh, someone hassling us to look at the piece of paper and uh, doing a lot of uh, doing a lot of no ending to us when things don't go well. Yeah, okay. Like improv, Sounds good. There's a lot of nopes. <laughs> <laughs> but not everything's yes. Yeah. Okay. Sounds great. Cool. So I guess the the prompt that I gave you guys for your characters was just an animal that you would find in a pet store. And that's kind of it. So I would love to, because it doesn't particularly matter what your, who your characters are to get started. So why don't we just introduce them and then we'll get into the story. Okay. Um, I am playing a parrot. Um, my background is both a French and Japanese. So my first name is Pear and my last name is Akito. Um, <laughs> And you'll be doing a Japanese accent, of course, right? Oh, no, I'll, I'm, I, I'll be speaking in a French accent, actually. But <laughs> For those of you didn't know, who didn't catch that, my name is Parakito. 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 That's, that's awesome. Oh, I love that. Thank you. Thank you. Same part. I almost went for another Dr. Phil joke, but then I was like, ah, it's been done. Because I was like looking up parrots, and I was like, a macaw. I could totally be Dr. Phil macaw. But... <laughs> Did that last week. Anyways. Um, and, oh, um, and my superpower is that I can translate from animal into human. So I can, oh, I will be able to, yeah. if we if we interact with humans, I will be able to try and translate. Though maybe not so well, because I have, as, I, as previously stated, I have a thick French accent. Are we doing superpowers? Because I, I interpreted unique talent as just like a normal animal thing you're good at. Yeah, and that's... Yeah, she can I, kind of do that. I okay. feel like I feel like in Ian's thing he said, "Oh, special ability." Okay, well, yeah, yeah, I think that, that works. Actually, I love that. So, okay, yeah, that's great. Well, my special, my unique talent. I'll go next. Wait, are you done? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um. Wait. What, what was your background? What do you look like? Oh God. Um. So this is where the improv would really come in handy. Um. I did not got it. I, so I uh, I've been around the pet store for a while. Have you guys seen? Have you guys seen? Have you guys ever seen the movie Polly, where he's like this parrot that's like been through a lot, and so he like has this like he's like kind of got this like hardened exterior. He doesn't like <laughs> he uh, tries tries to pretend that he's super tough. Um, that's me. I've been, I've just been passed down to too many owners, as you all know. Parrots live a long time and can outlive people, and so. I've just seen too many of my loved ones pass on, and uh, it's really hardened me to the outer world. And add that on to the fact that I'm like 
French and I'm just very cynical. Um, I've been smoking a pack a day for the last 10 years of my long, long life. Um, it's just been a real hard life for me. It's amazing that you can do that without lips. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you'd be surprised. Yeah. The, uh, the, the pet shop owner actually is kind enough to roll me like tiny little cigarettes, um, which I'm going to have to find a new, I guess, supplier for if we ever escape this place. You never know. I assume a parrot might just kind of like deep throat the cigarette to get like an actual like point of suction on it. So like you just instead of like putting the cigarette in his beak, it's just kind of like, but you could smoke that way. Yeah, I guess you can't get like, yeah, you can't get a good seal. You do waste a yeah. lot of tobacco. The smoke like leaks out the other side, but he just likes it. It makes it makes him look cool. Yeah, yeah. you can like you can also I mean, like you, you can, you're you're an animal scientist, so you can you can like if you close your beak and you like put it into your like one beak nostril and then put, like close off the other one with your like wingtip, then it, you, the smoke goes right in there. Yeah, no smoking. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Nose. Yeah, there's a nose smoking sign on my cage. <laughs> All right, Kelly, tell us All about right. your character. So, um, yeah, uh, because I'm trying to shamelessly curry favor uh, with the GM, I am a ferret uh, named Skeeter. Um, so, what do I look like? Long, like long <laughs> even for a ferret. <laughs> yeah, yeah, checks yeah. out. Mm -hmm. And um, like, kind of like, and even for a ferret, when you look in my eyes, it's extra like extra beady. Yeah, like a little more soulless than a normal ferret. Like, just I look that much more dead inside. Ten percent more dead inside. Nice. Okay, you got ten percent buff to being dead inside. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my backstory <laughs> is that like I was uh, adopted by a family. Um, not too long ago and I was returned to the store in like a week because I suck. Um, like <laughs> oh. I'm not saying the family tried that hard but it was one of those families where they're like, oh, we'll get a ferret and did like no research. It's like me. Yeah, exactly. And immediately got to this point where they were like, oh, well, it's like we're not having any fun with this ferret. And so they took me back to the store. Um, and, uh, my unique talent, uh, which I guess is almost, it's pretty much as good and powerful as like, you know, being able to translate human to animal. Uh, my unique talent is biting, <laughs> but like a lot, like yeah, I, I chew nice. through things you wouldn't expect even for a ferret. Ooh, you can summon extra ferret powers to basically bite shit. Nice. Yeah. And that's part of the reason I was returned to the store. Um, I didn't do my stats yet because I was wondering if I could. Um, I'm wondering how flexible you are in the rules that we came up with. So you mean the rules that you came up with that I've never played with before? Well, the you idea, basically change them. However the thing you want. that we have written down is that you start all your stats at minus one and distribute four points as you see fit, right? So if you really wanted a min-max, you would just stay two of them at minus one, and the other one is like three. But can okay. I drop one lower? Can I be a minus two? Sure. Okay. Yeah. So I want to be a minus two of understanding, I think. <laughs> okay, yeah. Senseless. Senseless ferret. Yeah. And then, like, I'll just be like an even zero psyche, and uh, I guess a three of body. Yeah, that makes sense. Because I'm going flexible. hard. Yeah. Yeah. Surprisingly strong. Okay, I love it. I love it. I love ferret the skeeter. That feels overpowered. I'm gonna be a two body and a one psyche because I've got that that energy. Nice. Okay. Uh, and Kitty, tell us about your animal adventure. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, I am the a uh, cat. Um. Nice. My name is Jack Onyx. I'm an English cat born into a life of luxury, actually, in English. Sorry, Jack, Jack Onyx? Jack Onyx. Oh, Jack Onyx. Okay. Onyx. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, so born into... Cat when you thought of Jack Onyx. <laughs> I was just like, I, I just wanted to make sure I, I heard You're that. like, interesting choice. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> <"Do that." laughs> 
Um, yeah, I'm like a rare breed that was born into like a life of luxury, but then um, kind of got got loose on the streets for a little bit. Um, but I was accepted back into the pet store because of this rare breed. So they're trying to still still sell me. Um, except that by now I'm kind of sort of scrappier looking. So like I'm black and gray and I've got like some fur missing on my head. Um, but I do wear a bow tie, um, which is kind of ripped, but it's, uh, you know, an ode to my English roots. Um, nice. and I just had my like ability or whatever was that I could jump really high. Is that, is that a thing? Yeah. That, yeah totally. Does that work? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Cats totally cool. do that. Uh, uh, jump really high. Cool. Awesome. All right, I will lay out the scene and we'll get started. Um, well, so Katie doesn't have stats. So oh, sorry. Um yeah, so the do you kind of you were kind of confused by the explanation I gave you earlier? No, I think I just I wasn't sure like um I wasn't sure how it worked with like the minus one thing or yeah, yeah. I, maybe I was just confused oh. by the yeah so, like which stats get what uh, amount or something. So all of them start at minus one, okay. But you get to take you know four points in your mind palace here and kind of drop them into these columns so that you can make them not be minus one anymore. So okay, you could take gotcha. all of your points and drop them into one column so that you're three on that and minus one on the others, or you can kind of distribute them more evenly. Okay, sweet. And it okay. depends if you think your character is maybe like particularly smart or particularly dumb or particularly strong or fast or particularly weak or slow or just Great. very uncharming or, you know what I mean? I think um, he is particularly more smart than he is. Um, what would Psyche be? Psyche is kind of like the dumping ground for everything that isn't like explicitly mental or physical. So I think of it as like charm, Charisma. deception, luck, oh, uh, cool. kind of your vibes, like anything that isn't like an explicit physical prowess or um, like knowledge. But it's yeah. kind of up to the GM and what their interpretation is because the interpretation varies wildly. Yeah, I'd say it's just like your your general chutzpah. Mm. Okay, cool. So like, then can I have two? So like I would maybe do the most on body. Is that cool? Like two because I jump high or whatever. Does that make sense? And then like, and then like, I have two more points, right? That I can. Yeah. So like a zero on understanding. So understanding would be smart, hey? Yeah. Mm, okay. So I think zero means it's unmodified. Okay, I think he's smart and fast, but not very, doesn't have very, uh, any finesse. Yeah. Okay, so you'll, yeah, you okay. throw like two into the first two, so you're like one, one, and negative one. Yeah. Cool. Sorry. Right, everyone, you know, their stats really quick. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm two, negative two, and one. Uh, so that's I'm two, going in two for body order. Okay. Sorry, what was that again? I'm a two body. Yep. Negative two understanding. Yep. And a one for psyche. Cool. All right. And what are yours, uh, Parakito? I uh, so I give myself a negative one for body because I'm a little bit limited in what I can do, being as I don't have like, you know, anything resembling hands. Um, I give myself a two in understanding because I've been alive. I've been around the block. So I know what's going on. Um, but I gave myself a zero in Psyche because I'm like, I don't know. I uh, don't have a lot of hits, but I don't have a lot of drive left in me to try and yeah. manipulate anyone or do anything. Neat. Uh, are your uh, body, understanding, and psyche. Um, what did Kelly just say? I was what? What did we say? One. One one and negative one. One one negative one. One one, one. negative one. Cool. 
All right. I guess we're ready to start, eh? Yeah. Hell yeah, yeah brother. Let's do it. Hell yeah. All right, everyone. Me? It's Sunday afternoon at the local pet center. Nearing its closing hour as the young clerk is counting the cash and the till, she looks over at the aisles of the animals with affection. She loves animals, particularly horses. If only they were allowed in the store, she mews to herself. She closes the till and does her final round, saying goodnight to all the animals. She lovingly pets a extremely long ferret <laughs> and thinks about how simple it must be to live as an animal. She fantasizes about it a lot. She walks out to the front door. She walks out. Wait, wait, wait. Is she walking away from petting me? Yep. When she pets me, I bite her. And she just chuckles and. <laughs> Rascal. Okay. And, scrut and she does like the neck pinch thing and just puts it back in the in the cage. Um, she, she walks up to the front door, walks out and locks up and heads off. But she was wrong about one thing. These animals were not so simple. In fact, when she leaves in the evenings, things get more complicated than she could even imagine. And then we cut in to uh, good old Skeeter, just kind of like rummaging around in the in his pet cage. And you hear you hear in the distance. Hey, Skeeter. Yes. <laughs> the the humans gone. The rest have gathered. Uh, it's time to go. Uh, yes, of course, yes. All right, let's go. Let's go. Uh, let's, let's go. Follow me. What can I bite? What can I bite? And he like does like an intricate uh, like at the back of your fair cage. He just like pulls a lever and like and a crank and it just like. Comes down Do like I a, see who did this? Uh, yeah, and then on the other side of the door, you see um, uh, Sneaky Pete, the weasel. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, All right, my friend, let's go. The others are waiting. I, I'm like already darting at him, just like yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you, you guys do like you're like a fair and a weasel, and you're just like, <laughs> like fucking crazy and shit. And you uh, come up, you're like walking behind the walls of like the pet cetera. That's where like the false door came out of. And it opens up into like this big area. It's got like a bit giant overhead lamp. That's kind of like dramatically swinging mm. back and forth. And uh sneaky Pete kind of like darts up and you see, uh, you see a parrot, uh, which you recognize as parakeeto, a cat, Jack Onyx. And you see the toad father, which is a ball, a bullfrog. Who's like wearing a tiny jacket, <laughs> and a top hat and smoking this, a cigar. He's like, uh, it's nice of you to join us, Skeeter. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm like, I like, is there something nearby I can chew on? Uh, there's, uh, yeah, there's like Squeaky Pete. There's Squeaky Pete, which is a different <laughs> character who's a mouse. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. What other Pete's are around? So, so, I, I, oh, I want to. Uh, I want to examine my surroundings for Pete. Uh, there's yeah, there's a sweepy sweepy Pete, which mm -hmm. is a chinchilla. All right. Um, you got a sleepy Pete. Yeah. Which is a, a sleepy animal. Is streaky Pete the snail there, the slug? <laughs> yeah, streaky streaky Pete is there. Mm -hmm. And he's uh, he's doing his thing, but sweepy Pete is right behind him cleaning up. And uh, what about sheepy Pete, the sheep. Uh, sh we don't talk about sheepy Pete. Oh, no. Sheepy Pete <laughs> is. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, if you want to bite something, you can, but. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> um, anyways, yes, the Toad Father looks at you all and he's like, well, uh, as you know, plans needed to be accelerated. It's not so simple. We can't just wait out the humans any longer. We, uh, we need to get out of here and we need to get out fast. And uh, it's you, the team that I've decided to be the, cr the crack, crack team that we need to escape here. I'm talking, of course, about you, Parakito, Skeeter, and Jack Onyx. You're the best soldiers we have, and the only hope for us to get out of here in time before you know what happens. Yeah, we're the crack team. We're going to the glacier. We're going to the glacier. We're going to smoke some crack. Let's go. <laughs> Skeeter, <laughs> enthusiastic as always. Are you in, Parakito? And I, like, hold my cigarette up and I go... That bitch forgot my sunflower seeds again. If I have to eat one more kernel of corn, I'm going to bite their nose off. These conditions are shit, I agree. Jack Onyx. 
uh, yes. Um, oh, I should have thought this uh, accent through this English thing. Um, I'm getting to an English accent. Yeah. Yes, I mean, I mean. <laughs> Jack Onyx on it as always. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Are there any kind of like crevices or like uh like this room we're in like this is like a back room of the pet store yeah so they're like any kind of like small areas under shelves or like just little like areas i can weasel myself into like within the step and uh sneaky p says what the fuck did you just say something you can weasel into you know how i <laughs> feel about that man uh, i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry and i and i i just i just try to get under like some sort of object that doesn't like it's not within broom's reach exactly and he like follows you he's like hey I, th hey <laughs> you can't just walk away from me like that i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry and i and i poop under the under the the cabinet ah, whatever fuck I'm gross. Under. Oh, and he like leaves <laughs> <laughs> and uh uh the toad father looks at you guys and he's like all right today is a uh, uh january 30th so we have one day to get the fuck out of here before the new <laughs> rotation comes in uh, I've gotten some information from uh, the, wi the wise one that every month we basically get rotated and exterminated. I know it's hard to believe, but it's got to be tonight. And, and they, 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 they do their calling on January 31st, the last day like, of each month kind of thing? <laughs> that's right. All right. I heard that's what happened to Creepy Pete last month. Oh, yeah, it's creepy Pete, the lizard. He was, <laughs> he was amazing. He was amazing. <laughs> and Snacky Pete, the extremely fat cat. He was so slow, he had no chance. <laughs> took him in the second. Time. Didn't stand a chance. Mm -hmm. oh, but anyways, I, I want you guys to figure out a way to get the fuck out of here. You, you have all the resources of Streaky Pete, Sleepy Pete, Sweepy Pete, Squeaky Pete, and Sneaky Pete at your disposal. That's right. That's right. I don't know why I spoke in your voice for a minute. Oh, man. I just got real nostalgic. I was I was thinking about Snarky Pete, the uh, parrot that swore too much. And so the, the he got taken away. Uh, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. All right. So uh, you, you kind of adjourned like the meeting room as the, the, the overhead light is swinging dramatically. And the bullfrog mm. is like kind of doing this with his fingers. And he's like, God help us all. As you like walk through the front doors and you kind of get the uh you get the the the, the view you walk the... through the front doors well that's our way out fucking mic drop <laughs> uh, yeah the the front doors of like the meeting room <laughs> area for animals it's probably not front door whatever but uh yeah you get like a the, like the the view of the entire store from here you're kind of like up by like the rodent cages and you're you're uh Repertoire of Streaky Pete, Sleepy Pete, Sweepy Pete, Sneaky Pete, and Squeaky Pete They're all like looking at you. And they're like, uh, yeah, they're, they're like, we're, we're ready for your command. Whatever you desire in the pet store, we will do it for you. They all say that in unison. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's like a <laughs> weird tonal thing where it's all mixed up, except for the snail, which just kind of like <laughs> is extending his purpose. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, you can see the entire store. There's like every aisle of, of the pastor that you can imagine. There's like a food section. Uh, Let's do the plan. Let's do the plan. What was the Toad Father's plan? I forgot. I got ADD. I don't know what that is, but I got it. Uh, and uh, Squeaky Pete uh, types up. Hey, what's your, uh, uh, you know, I figured out a way to get out of the store. <laughs> we, 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 got, we got no plan. He just told to get out. We got no plan. We, we, have, we have no plan. <laughs> Okay, okay, we're gonna go, we're gonna go, we're gonna go chip the door. And I, I, I charge to the front door and I just, I, I'm gonna start, I feel like the ferret's first instinct is to look at the exit and just try to smash my body against like the crack all around the door that I can reach to see if it's like big enough that I can force myself under it. All right, uh, roll for body. All right, so I'm a, I'm a plus two on body. So I rolled a nine plus two, that's 11. Oh, so that's super good. Of course. Yeah, you I'm not gonna let Skeeter you don't mess so around. Super quick though. Uh yeah, you you're like you're like nya, 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 and just kinda like just digging at the, the corner of the door there, just going like freaking crazy. And uh you you kind of like notice that there's a crack that's going like along the bot it's like a two panel glass door. Um there's like a crack that's going along the bottom 
part of the glass panel at the bottom panel. Sorry. So you don't really get out, but you do observe that like with enough force, you might be able to break through the the bottom panel. Okay. Uh, I back up, charge again, and start sprinting, and just like try to throw myself at the bottom panel. Yeah. So yeah, you like with all your like, because I own a ferret. You, you're like quarter pound of mass. It's like ah! flies through the the air. It's like a noodle, kind of like wiggling through the air, and just, like, <laughs> just like hit the side of the door and fall down to the ground. Do I break the glass? No. <laughs> okay. Well, I feel like that's my turn. So I don't know. Um. Come on, guys! Come on, guys! You gotta help out! You gotta help out! We got no time to waste. We got, uh, we got, uh, we got too many, we got too many peats here, and not enough, uh, not enough cleats. Cool. <laughs> is is there a, is there a window in the in the shop, like a some sort yeah. of window thing? Yeah, totally. So, uh, yeah, there's like this is like a you can imagine like a freaking North American shopping mall that has just like a bunch of connected buildings. There's like two gigantic windows on either side of the door. And a little swing door action with the two panels of glass. Okay. So let me show everyone here. We have Sneaky Pete, who's a weasel. We have Squeaky Pete, who's a mouse. Yeah. We have Sweepy Pete, the chinchilla. Yeah. Um, Sleepy Pete, the bat. And <laughs> Streaky Pete, the snail. Okay. The five of them. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, go on, Katie, with your plan. I know, oh yeah, no, I'm trying to. Really good one, I'm wondering if um if there's like also like like a way out the window somehow, or like a way through the vents or something. Oh, vents! Yeah, totally. Um, we have all these sneaky, squeaky, yeah. sleepy things. Yeah, totally. <laughs> so yeah, you're looking around, and you can totally see like one of those like paneled. Uh, yeah. Created uh, vent kind of things that like, yeah, like that's a system that cool, goes like cool. through the entire building. And there's definitely like a panel with like four screws on the corner that like looks like you could get in and out. And you kind of hear the hum of air coming into the building from there. Can I try and jump up to see if I can like knock it loose? Yeah, roll body. Or do you have dice? I can roll for you. I've got dice. You, oh, nice. Good job. Since we're talking about sound effects, can you do that hum? What does that hum sound like? <laughs> oh, yeah. That's an air vent if I ever heard one. So hey, you hear that? You hear that? <laughs> that? That's the air vent. That's the air vent. We got to go to the air vent. I rolled a seven. Seven. Does that mean it par partially works? What was, I don't know, it's up to you. Wait, what, oh, what, what, yeah. what was she rolling? Uh, body. What was body? Uh, one eight yeah. okay yeah so you like you're like uh don't worry guys i got this and you do like a cool like cat like you jump from like shelf to shelf you're knocking yeah. over like food <laughs> and like kitty litter totally. all over the ground and uh you can kind of like from the top of the uh shelves you kind of like leap up and you can definitely reach it and you do like the little like ring thing when you hit like the grates um <laughs> And it, it seems like it's, like, screwed into the HVAC thing. Like, you're not going to be able to knock it loose, but maybe you could pry pry the panel off or take off the screws or something like that. But you get a, you get a real good look at it, and you're high up onto the, the shelves there. Nice. And uh, uh, Sleepy Pete is, like, <laughs> actually just hanging off of the vent beside you. And, like, the <laughs> bling of it, just like... <sighs> <sighs> Oh, yeah, no, I'm awake. Yeah, what's up? <laughs> oh, oh, you're trying to get in the vents there. And I'm like, oh, sleepy Pete, always one step behind. <laughs> and he's like, hey, that's not. And he just passes out beside you. <laughs> I want, I want to hop around like directly below, um, sleepy Pete, just kind of hopping and like doing little like ferret arcs and be like, hey. Hey, hey, Pete, Sleepy Pete, Sleepy Pete, Sleepy Pete, pick me up, pick me up, pick me up. Uh, is it nighttime? It's nighttime, right? Yeah, it's like it's so, like evening. You okay, so Sleepy Pete, I feel like Sleepy Pete should be waking up. Sleepy Pete, I feel like you should be waking up. Come on, come on. It's like it's like eleven a.m. for you. Like you're 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 sleeping in. Come on, come on. Oh what? Oh my god. And he like looks at his watch. He's like, oh my god, it's eleven p.m. I slept in so long. I'm so sorry, guys. <sighs> he goes a little bat. 
Twitch. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm with I'm I'm with you guys. Pick what? me up. Pick me up. Okay, sure. And he like he like he's he's a bat, so he's real tiny, but he's like I'm surprisingly light. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And he lifts you up towards the the vent. Yeah. So I want to try to chew through the screws. Yeah. Roll body. Now biting is my unique talent, so I don't know how that does that does that affect anything. I'll just give you a bonus. Does that make sense? Plus five. Plus five. I don't Damn. know. Or a roll with advantage. What's the bonus? I, I I don't know. I thought we weren't playing with special. But... Just roll. Just roll. All right. Yeah. Uh. I got an eight plus two is a ten. Ten? Yeah, totally. So like he like holds you up and it's almost like he's holding like a power tool. Like you're just like and he's just like <laughs> don't even just gnaw off the screws. You just like he just like welds a hole through the HVAC system using the ferret. It's like a semi automatic like cutting machine. Yeah. Which yeah. is exactly what welding is. It's making holes and things. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ferret powered welding machine. And you just hear like the bonk as the the grate falls onto the ground. We gotta go. We gotta go. We gotta go. And Come all on. the peats cheer. Yay! <laughs> At the same time. <laughs> Come on. What are you doing? Why are you waiting for us, Ricky Pete? Why are you being so slow? I haven't I haven't heard shit from you. And he's like, he just does that thing with his like antenna eyeballs. That, like... <laughs> and uh Squeaky Pete's like, hey man, you got a real shit attitude. You call me a fucking weasel. Um, you know fucking uh, sorry, this is which streaky, streaky Pete. <laughs> sorry, the uh, the weasel, yeah. Sne sneaky Pete. Sorry, right. not squeaky Pete. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, you got a real fucking attitude, man. You like you call me a fucking weasel. You know how I feel that. You know that streaky Pete can't talk, man. Give him a fucking break. Am is I, it like wait, a little wait, bit wait, racist wait. that we call him sneaky Pete? Because like sneaky is like kind of like a stereotype about weasels. Did he like make this nickname yeah, up himself? He, he did like a. Uh, uh, Definitely one step above a microaggression, but not like full on weasel racism. Great. Got right it. Okay. Weasels. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Am I currently still being held by Sleepy Pete? Yes. In the air. Yep. And uh, Sneaky Pete is on the ground? Uh, yeah, he's like, uh, the, all the Pete's are kind of like traveling up the, the, uh, uh, all the shelves in respective animal ways. Okay. Okay. Well, I want to try to. I I have forgotten about like we successfully chewed through the grate, right? Yeah, yeah. There's a giant hole, so, and the 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 whir of the HVAC like went from like to like whoa. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Now he's doing his business. Poor HVAC. Uh, oh. I'm a, I have a very one track mind, and I'm pissed off at Sneaky Pete. So I want to try and direct Sleepy Pete to drop me, like just dive bomb, drop me onto Sneaky Pete. To engage, let me at him. Let me at him. Drop me at him. Come on, come on. Drop me. I don't, I know you're lazy. Just let me. Just drop me. He's like, okay, I will. But I don't think a race war between the weasels. And drop me. Right drop now me. Is a good idea. Drop okay, me, fine. Here we go. <laughs> and he like drops you down, and you're like <laughs> flying through the air towards. Uh, yeah. So sneaky Pete. as I reach Sneaky Pete, I try to bite his like carotid artery. Oh my god. <laughs> uh. Okay. Roll body. So vicious, Skeeter. You're so vicious. <laughs> Uh, okay, so with my plus two, that's a 12. Wow, okay. It's Sneaky Pete's like, oh man, I've had enough. <laughs> and just like, it's like almost an anime. Like, it just like, you hear like a, see like a white swing go like across his like mm -hmm. body. And like, it's like, you didn't even stop. You just like sliced him right, right in the throat. And he's like, yeah. <laughs> and then like all the other Pete's are like looking at you like, what? What? <laughs> Oh wait, let's do Squeaky Pete. Yeah. Why did you do that? All right, I look at, I try to look at all of them at once, but especially Squeaky Pete, and I'm like, anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else got a problem? Come on, come on, I got us out of here. Let's no, go, yeah, let's go. No. Okay, uh, roll Psyche for okay. you're just trying to intimidate all the Pete's that were on your side generally. Sure. <laughs> I mean, I do hate, and I do hate to break the fourth wall here, but Nicole, do you remember? Did we put something in the like GM contract that said that the GMs have to bring up anime like once per episode? Because I feel like we're on a streak here between him and Josh. I mean, they just have to bring it up enough that we can like roast them about it. So oh, uh, that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. So a few more jokes, and then at the end of the show, we'll think of something. <laughs> okay. So my total uh, uh, six plus one is seven. And all the Pete's are like kind of back away from you, and they're like, uh, "Pierre, 
Pierre, uh, Pierre Aguito, man. What's with your homie? Like, who is this? Who's the Mexican one? Uh, we're going to call that Sleepy Pete the Chinchilla. Uh, <laughs> hey, man, you get your homeboy under control, man. You, you just killed uh, Sneaky Pete. And I he go, was like a brother to me. I go, he is better off dead. We all are. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, roll, roll uh, Psyche. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> okay. People to your way. <laughs> Am I gonna convince them to like do some like mass, some sort of mass suicide ritual? No, I'm not. Um, I got a full five. <laughs> How did we jump straight to mass suicide ritual? I thought. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and uh, Squeaky Pete looks at you. He's like, "I love being alive. I don't really feel like dying. I want to get out of here. I, but I'm kind of scared of uh, Skeeter." <laughs> So let's go. Let's go. Show me the way. Parakito, Parakito, you haven't carried me out. Carry me, carry me out of this vent. Let's go with this vent. Come on. And I go. I'll buy you okay. smokes. <laughs> okay. I'll do it for the cigarettes. And I grab you, but I'm like kind of rough about it. Like I probably dig, I like dig my claws into your like flesh a little bit. I'm like, all right. And I flap my wings and try to aim for the grate kind of old though so nice. um yeah and you're just gonna um, eat him into the hole oh no i'm gonna like i'm thinking i'm gonna fly right up into the grate and like like oh, we're gonna yeah. both going in there all right and all the pizza are kind of like wait for me and everyone like joins hands and you like <laughs> pull a string of animals and like oh jesus christ iconic. oh i'm sort of shape oh <laughs> <laughs> why did i smoke so much <laughs> <laughs> You can do it! Yeah! <laughs> and like Jack Onyx like links on it at the very end there and it's just like <gasps> it like kind of like <laughs> it kind of heaves a bit, mm -hmm. but you do manage to pull everyone up into the vent. Where <laughs> the sound of the vent is really like going at this point. It's like oh, oh. <laughs> it's right. real loud. Right. But uh yeah, you're all in the vent and it's it's pitch black. So does it sound different when we're in it compared to when we're like outside of it? Yeah, because like it used to be like this, this, this. Yeah. And then when you made the hole, it was like, oh, oh, oh. but now it's like, so oh, it's, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it's pitch black in there. But does Parakito, um, do they have like, do they light their, how do they light their cigarettes? Do they oh, have anything no. on them? I usually get the shop, I, I usually get the shop owner to light one for me. I don't uh, know why I miss it. Light one for me before he leaves, but. And you do remember um, that uh, the shopkeep keeps all the cigarettes by the uh, the till behind, like, in the employees' area. So I go, Jesus Christ, and I go back. And so, I'll get it. so I guess I'm going to fly. I'm going to fly to go and get it. Um, yeah. Cool. Where's the – is there, like, a door between me and the employees' area? Uh, no, it's just, like, behind the cash register on the on the counter kind of thing. Okay. But, uh, cool. yeah, you fly over, and you can see the – the, the lighter that he usually uses for you and but beside the lighter you see um some adoption form papers for parakeeto by the shop owner oh no and uh, just a little note he obviously wrote on the papers for himself he's just like i freaking love this bird man <laughs> <laughs> i hope he doesn't just run away someday <laughs> Um, Never write right. that shit down because it will always bite you in the yeah. ass. Like, <laughs> it's always like you I write don't. in your journal. You're like, oh boy, I just met someone. I hope it's the real deal. Like I hope they don't like. Hope I don't get. I pregnant. hope they don't really marry the pool boy or the baker instead. And then every single time you write it down, it always looks so dumb in retrospect. You're like, well, that's exactly what happened. Of course it did. <laughs> Should we do, do we want to go through your journal next episode and figure out the year that you were journaling? Is that why you stopped journaling? I mean, we don't figure anything out. That's exactly what happened. She ran off with the baker and I stopped journaling. I mean, okay. this is like a death note or whatever. Like your journal actually influences the real world. Hmm. Well, I assume at so. Least, at least she didn't run off with the pool boy, though. So that's the second. Yeah, that's fair. That's the second uh, anime reference as well. So one more and then we're going to roast you about mm -hmm. it later. <laughs> Perfect. I think your theory is correct because the last thing I wrote in that journal before I gave up was, "Wow, this uh, coronavirus seems like the real deal." And I just stopped writing, so maybe that's why we're still in the same spot. Yeah, could you just put a period on that sentence so we can 
I'll put like an ellipsis and then not and then an exclamation point and then we'll be back on. Yeah, time. maybe edit that for us. Edit that for nice. us. I, I told you though, it's full. I'm out of room. There's no other. There's no way to. Maybe a sticky note. <laughs> and it only sort of happens. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. that was the vaccines. Like someone wrote, "Vaccines are good," on the sticky note, put it in there, but then it fell out. And then it's like, well, now we're kind of back. Oh, now they're kind of medium. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's happening in the story? Oh, yeah. So uh, per Parakeeto managed to the, grab the, the lighter. But so, just... quick question. Can I read? Uh, yeah, uh, now you can. Yeah, totally. Oh, damn it. <laughs> I was hoping I could just fly away from this note. <laughs> no, no. You're conflicted. Uh, now. Uh... Can you up with the can translate? human can you translate all human languages or just like specifically english i'd say like english and french probably english french and, and a little japanese my japanese is rusty though yeah yeah mm. and one one swear word in german <laughs> yeah. um okay so i read the note um and a single tear rolls down my feathered cheek and i go i wish i could oh. trust you but i've been burned before and I, oh, nice. and I uh, pick up the lighter and I fly back up to the vent. Do you do like a dramatic like flick of the lighter when you say that? I would, but I don't have hands. So right, you need, right. Okay. But I'm yeah. thinking about it. I'm thinking if that if I did have hands, I would just light those papers on fire. Very nice. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you fly up back to the the crew, no problem, and uh, return the lighter and. Uh, uh, Sweepy Pete looks at you and he's like, oh, nice. No problems. <laughs> and I look off into the distance and I say, no. <laughs> he's like, I'm over here. <laughs> that that yeah, okay, cool. Let's do this, man. <laughs> yeah, seems, seems like that went really well. Great. Thanks. <laughs> Sweet. So, uh, yeah, let's give that lighter to someone with fingers. Do I have fingers? I guess you got like I feel like Jack Onyx has fingers. Like, yeah, like, kind of like paw fingers. Like, maybe if you held it with like, two paws, you could, like... All right. Yeah, oh, like, with my... Every, everyone roll body and see who can use the lighter. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, gotta, yeah. You guys go ahead. What did you get? I got four. I got five, five minus one, which is also four. <laughs> No. What did you get? Well, I got a 12 before <laughs> my plus two. Oh, no. <laughs> so, so, God, uh, yeah, you you, know, like, you just kind of, like, think in your head. You're like, oh, I've never actually tried. And you, like, do it and just, like, it, like, <laughs> just pops out of you. And Jack, you see, like, kind of, like, catch your paws, but it just, like, you basically just, like, volleyball spike it over towards, uh, uh, Skeeter, and he like does like a cool wrap around. He catches it and like flips it into the air and just like and like lights it. And he's got like huddled up in his little ferret armpit. <laughs> he does it very very good. He does that thing where you flick it open on your jeans one way and then flick it the other way because it's a zippo. Clearly, you flick it yeah, open on yeah, your jeans, oh, yeah. flick it the other way, and it floats up. Looks oh, cool. But he like rolls it around like along the spine of his ferret body. It's like and then like <laughs> shoots up into the air, and you're like you. Yeah, you, you catch it and you got a lighter. And like all the Pete's kind of like look at each other and then like look at you and you're like, all right, Skeeter, I guess we'll follow you. Yeah, aren't, aren't you glad it wasn't a plus three in body? Like, what would you even describe for that? Like, you just breathe fire. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, Fuck it. You absorb the essence of the lighter and become the yeah. fire. Like, become yeah, you, the, the fire. Lighter. Yeah. You just breathe fire now. <laughs> See, if we were those kind of people that had a fan base, somebody who is talented would have like animated that little sequence where I lit the lighter. But uh, yeah, okay, wait. So I lit we'll the lighter. Hope. That's where we're at. Yep. One yeah, day. you got the lighter, and everyone's kind of like you've taken a leadership position here. You kind of like you're the only one who can like see using the lighter. Uh, I, I guess I kind of wait. Isn't Jack Onyx a cat? Don't cats have like some sort of night vision? I guess whatever. It's too late for that. Go on. Oh yeah, sorry. I, I, yeah. I, I push forward. I push forward you, like you, with that the lighter. Matter. Like I have lighter lit. And I push forward and I'm like, man, this still sucks. This sucks a lot. I kind of hate holding it. It's really hot. God, I wish somebody here had night vision. I say it like really passively aggressively. <laughs> and I'm like, 
hanging out in the corner of the vent uh and i'm like i i have night vision <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck she's at night vision come on come on let's go let's go but i'm let's like go. i didn't want to help you I'll keep, I'll keep the lighter burning just in case I didn't. Uh, I didn't disclose it before because you all seem like you're in your own internal fight, you ferrets and you, all you rodents. So if you what can't you mean, you be a team, I'm not going to lead you. <laughs> and uh, as you guys are kind of like arguing, uh, Squeaky Pete kind of chimes up. He's like, "Oh, look at the lighter!" And you can see like the the flame of the lighter kind of kind of like directing down one passage of the the like HVAC kind of like tunnel. Mm -hmm. He's like, that could that could be leading the way out. I, I I think we should follow the cat. Let's follow the cat. Follow the cat. Okay, we'll just follow the cat. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, okay. And then I start running <laughs> down, and, uh, down the vent. Uh, yeah, and every okay, cool. And everyone's uh, I guess following you. Um, I'm doing that awkward bird waddle thing because birds aren't meant to walk. And the bat doesn't really have enough room to fly, so he's doing the same thing. <laughs> uh, and I'm uh, struggling to keep up running, and so I eventually give up holding the lighter, and I let it go out, and I try not to reflect on how utterly pointless that extremely cool move was when we're following <laughs> the cat anyway. And you have a lighter. I just try to carry it with me and catch up to the cat. Cool. Yeah. So, yeah, you, you're, like, charging down this uh, these tunnels, and you, I guess... Are you just going to like follow kind of where the lighter is like the wind is going kind of thing? Yeah. Like, oh, oh. I don't. Yeah. I, I think maybe I'm following like, don't do I have any like, you know how cats can like, they're very agile. So they can like sense corners and things like they're very like. Yeah. Yeah. Are do you, I have any of those? Feel things yeah, I'm around. Like navigating it, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, like, you're kind of like weaving through, kind of like following where the wind is like pulling you, because maybe it like goes yeah. to a vent, goes outside, or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. There's like a there's like a draft. I'm like. Yeah. 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 This dra yeah. You're following the draft, and you like. Yeah. Kind of turn this corner with everyone kind of like following behind you, and you see like this giant fan just like, like kind of like chopping in front of there and you uh you see uh uh the moonlight coming in through past the fan uh but you see a silhouette kind of leaning against the the tunnel there as the fan is like <laughs> chopping through and then he's like well 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 if it isn't the terrorists and like he steps forward and you can see the outline of like a, a weasel that's like missing his eye and he's got like a <sighs> scar across his forehead He's wearing like a, a fedora. <laughs> and he's like, Is that just a character just... from the new Ice Age movies? Sorry? Sorry nothing. Go ahead. No, I, no. <laughs> probably. No, let's dive probably. Into that. probably. Mm -hmm. And he's like, uh, Yeah, he's wearing like a fedora. And he's like, It's the goddamn worms and his worm, worm family. Isn't that right, you piece of shit, Skeeter? You, you're a real piece of shit. You know that? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, not a, I'm not a worm. I'm a ferret. I'm a ferret. Uh, you got the wrong guy. You, you want this guy. And I point over at Streaky Pete. Who, I mean, I assume somehow Streaky Pete kept up with us. No, he's just come around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, <laughs> evolving. I was like, yeah, that's the worm. That's the worm. Yeah, I, I meant a, a figurative worm. You you are a piece of shit. You know that. I don't know. I don't know what figurative means. And, and then I look over at Jack Onyx and I'm like, is it just. Well, why don't you do something about this guy? Use your uh, use your intimidation, intimidating British accent. <laughs> and the, yes. uh, the the weasel looks at you and he's like, "Jack, we go way back, Jack." And uh, and I I do go way back with this weasel, and I, I I start speaking to him in our in our language of our the part of England that we met in, um, which Let's, was the uh, yeah. Yeah, Let's uh, yeah. speak in our native tongue together. Uh, well, there. What do you think you're doing? You think that you Wait, can what? stop us? <laughs> what happened to the Brotherhood? Oi, oi, mate. The Brotherhood's long gone. You know that. Yeah, <laughs> I know. 
I know it died when I <laughs> when our friend. I know, I know it died when our friend also died, our best Greg. friend. We could never, Greg. <laughs> Very British. You know, Greg. <laughs> yeah. But just let us pass through, or we're gonna have to have another showdown, like well, the one we had with Greg. Boy. I don't want to have to kill. I'm so bad at bridge. I'm so sorry. I don't want to have to kill another unlucky uh, bastard like Greg, but the Skeeter fellow, I'm Scottish now, Skeeter <laughs> fellow. I don't know about that chap. I don't know about him at one bit. He just killed my best mate. Ah, uh, your, your Scottish roots are coming out. Oh, mine are too. It's easier. <laughs> it's contagious, I We're, know. We also did a spell in Scotland. Where we also lost another friend. Um, yeah, no, I know Gray. Uh, Skeeter is a annoying um, at best, it's but uh, yes, but we need him because he uh, he sort of uh, sort of keeps all the other uh, rodents in check, you know. And uh, we just we ask for your mercy to pass this one time. Uh, roll psyche because that's actually a very good reason. Five minus one, four. Mate, I wish it could be that easy, but he's got to pay for his crimes. Look here, give give me a chance to best Skeeter and one uh, ferret on weasel combat, and I might consider letting you pass if I'm alive. Well, that, that is the code, I suppose. I'm for it. All right, and he like spits in his hand, and he like reaches out to you. He's like, "What? No spit?" <laughs> Sorry. There we go. It's been a while since I've met one of my brothers. <laughs> it's kind of gross that you didn't do that. <laughs> and he like uh, he walks over. He's like, "All right, back to normal English." <laughs> That's too bad. I, really, I, I honestly, I, do you feel like you finished that conversation? Because I would really like to see you two talk just a little more. You just have a great time. <laughs> All right. <laughs> like, <laughs> he's like, Oi, uh, shall this we... guy really uh, digs our accents. Yes. Shall we switch to our third dialect, Australian? Because oh. mine is. <laughs> yes. Let's express our the full range of our cultural experience. Experiences together, mate. Yes. All right. Uh, well, you know, I I've got to say when you uh, I know when you face off Skeeter that you are a very uh, you're very good in combat. You've proved that time and time again. You're very strong. Uh, uh, well then, yeah, square to go. Like you know, I'm about to, you know, put a one two. I'm about to box his freaking ears. If you know what I mean. Yes. Uh, but you know, um. Remember, there's the rule of, um, you know, because you're much larger than Skeeter, that perhaps he could assign uh, another type of animal to also combat with him, like a, like a flying type animal. Or the ancient rule of the Blood Brothers. I That's know what right. You're talking about where he who has no wings may gather assistance from wings when he is smaller than the other opponent. It's a very oh, yeah. well-worded script. That's right, then. <laughs> but the rule does dictate I'm allowed one blood brother as well. <laughs> but he's also got to have wings, so I'm going to take uh, Sleepy Pete. <laughs> he's going to be my mate. Sleepy Pete, all right. Skeeter, all right. who will yeah. you take? Oh, sorry. He, he can't understand us when we're talking. Skeeter, you're allowed a blood brother in this battle. I've already claimed... Uh, Sleepy Pete is my blood brother. Well, I never want Paracino. He's a very he's a very quiet individual, so I feel like I feel like he's the kind of person that would take a moment of tension like this and just completely smash it with an incredibly dramatic line to leave us on uh, almost a hanging point, uh, da, 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 like a, like a, like an act break, if you will. Oh yeah, like a like an episode finishing kind of cliffhanger one liner. That's <laughs> that, there's a lot of responsibility on a line like that. Yeah, it's the kind of thing I understand really well from uh, all the TVs on the pet store. What do you think, Parakito? Um, and Parakito turns to the group and says... <laughs> hey, 
Bada bing, bada boom. <laughs> the music cue is broken. Imagine it's the dramatic swell of the of the the game ending sound. I'm waiting for what Parakito is going to say. Yes. Um, Parakito turns to the not camera to the group. Yeah, and says, over camera. Yeah. Says quoi? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. That's all the end. And you didn't even go during the intermission. <gasps> Well, I feel like the good as reason as any to uh, to just cut him loose. <laughs> awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is like such a like I see how improv based that can be, but it's so Nicole. You were mentioning like how scared you were, like you know, improv terrifies you. That like that scares me a lot that just because i don't do it right like it's very like it's just a whole new thing yeah see the, the improv we played we did with you was very fun and like i, I felt great with that i this game I'm always like, i also feel like i was like i don't know what my character would say here and also my french accent was bad so i appreciated you guys going back and forth in your british question mark accent <laughs> british <laughs> from everywhere yes <laughs> from everywhere oh thanks <laughs> uh yeah i mean well i guess we all learned a lot today um mm. i learned that it's best to just not have a character and just bite everything it makes it so much easier so <laughs> for all you kids at home that's how you role play <laughs> just with ridiculously high rolls and everything works <laughs> <laughs> i guess yeah that was fun by the way i enjoyed that mm -hmm. Good. We're gonna kick you out for real. Yeah. Oh, okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs> See you. Because here we are in Nicole's favorite segment. Oh. Oh, is it just plugs time? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, did you have anything you wanted to plug, Katie? Oh my goodness. Um, sure. Yeah. You. Uh, you can come see. Uh, if you're like into improv, you can come to the 11 o'clock number, which is an improvised musical, do their 10th anniversary show on Saturday at nine o'clock. It's been oh. running 10 years. Yeah, I will be in it, but also more people will be in it. So if you didn't like me, don't worry, still come. There's more people. <laughs> <laughs> don't want it oh, to throw you. <laughs> yeah, uh, thank you. Look at guys. that Thanks. on the ball. Amazing. Thank you. Despite all the abuse we give her. <laughs> yeah wonderful um yeah you were great so i'm sure if there i think I, we have one it says we have one viewer but that's usually just kelly watching from oh, a different tablet yeah okay cool so <laughs> but i will tell people about it i do have friends in that's that's great. Yeah. nice cool. yeah well thanks for the thanks for the class yeah no prob thanks for having me no prob that's <laughs> nice. true improv. That's nice. what we call it. Nice. So good. <laughs> oh, what? No, oh. I've got one real viewer. Oh, that's Hell amazing. Yeah. I like the excitement Hello. that Nicole reads. We got one real viewer, and then the dismay as she goes, oh, that's Ryan. <laughs> Not dismay, just, you know. That's like, oh, that makes sense. He, he has to watch because he loves me. Um, oh, anyways. Man. Let's see. I don't know Ryan, so it's exciting to me. I'm like, Ryan's new. Ryan's new. Absolutely. <laughs> well, right? Nicole, since we retired the old show ending bit, do you want to uh, introduce your new show ending bit? Uh, yeah. My new show ending bit is called Insults for Kelly. Katie, you go first. Insults? <laughs> like real ones? <laughs> Whatever your heart tells you, you should say. Okay, I'll turn you back on for this. <laughs> Kelly. He's, on, he's turned on the minute I said insults for Kelly. We just insult him yeah. right now? No, actually, you know what? I did say we were going to roast you for being a weeb, so. Oh. Boo. It's funny. No, come I, on. I even... no, 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 I want you to do it, uh, Nicole. I want you to hit me with your meanest insult. 
Um, you always...